Um, Al Price, this is an example of what he was doing in his studio work, making these really large um, welded steel sculptures that were largely informed by light and shadow. There was often a kinetic motion to it would make the light and shadow move. He was a finalist, I think, six or seven times, and put together great proposals, would do the interview, and not get the project. So um, when a bridge project opened, our office staff called him and said, you've got to apply for this. And at that point, I think he had enough. And he said, oh, you know, I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't keep applying. He said, oh, no, really, really, this project, we need to apply for it. And sure enough, he was selected. Um, he's since gone on to do projects all over the country. Um, basically, what he what he did was he took the vocabulary he was working with in the studio and translated it into a model that he then brought to the engineers of the design team, and they worked together to come up with this, the Kyrie Monto Distant Pedestrian Bridge. And it's based on a drill bit, but as you stand excited at certain times of the day, you still get that light and shadow play that he had in the studio work. Um, another example is Mary Schindel's Laura Flowers. Mary does really fine pencil drawing and prints, monoprints mainly. Um, this is what she showed to a panel. She was selected to design a terrazzo floor, and in doing that, had to redraw everything by hand over and over and over again, but worked pretty closely with both the architect and the fabricator to get where she needed to be. Um, the end result was a very large scale version of one of her drawings. So there's very actually seven of uh, Some projects that are coming up that are similar, Fausto Fernandez is a painter here in Arizona, does really detailed layer painting. Uh, he was selected to design a terrazzo floor that will be part of the Sky Train opening in 2013. The materials he's working with are not necessarily um, easy to layer. They're very flat. But he's found a way to weave these colors in, and in 2013 you'll be walking on this. So it's possible. Um, but with that, as I mentioned, we're talking about presentations and proposals, and we've asked Matt Krall from Collab Studio to talk about their process and how they build proposals. Um, so I'm going to hand it off now. And we'll have time for question and answer along the way. Hello. My name is Carl Eicher. I am one third of Collab Studio. Please don't think I'm too high up on the toilet pole. I'm just slightly better looking than Matt, so you let me go first. So, uh, like I said, I'm one third. Uh, Matthew and Maria are the other power creators and founders of the firm. Uh, we're doing a presentation on how to present our projects to a board. The part that I'm going to start off with is kind of our what not to do portion. That. Uh, just so in case you think I'm doing a really good job, maybe I should take my talents to Hollywood, but it's uh, to take the cues from mistakes I made, things I'm talking about too long, anything else that just sounds totally ridiculous. So Matt will come in after that, talk about kind of the process of how we're really going to go into a presentation and actually give a presentation, and he will formally introduce himself also. So, like I said, I am one third of CoLab and a little more about the firm itself. Uh, we are an art firm in Tempe. Um, we have been around for about six years now. We've got artwork in Arizona and California, and we've had interest from other places. Unfortunately, things haven't gone quite how we wanted it, but hopefully we'll keep working. So, this is a project that we are shortlisted for, obviously. This is the Retail Life Project. It was a project for soccer fields, that were, artwork was needed to create a shade structure. Another artist was brought in uh, and wasn't, didn't quite cut it. So we went in, we were shortlisted. We needed shade structure. And so this is what was under construction at the time. This is some of the um, kind of inspiration that we got. 
you know, obviously we've got the Colosseum, we've got some classical antiquity artwork. There was really a lot of uh, mass and our strength to this that we really like. And so we really wanted to kind of bring those elements into the Rich 11 shape structures that we, we proposed. So also there is an element kind of uh, agrarianness and agriculturalness with the soccer fields out in the middle of the desert didn't quite fit. So we had an aspect of agricultural to them that we kind of wanted to highlight with the art project. So we've got this mass that we chose to do with desert stone, but we're stones that we're gonna do 10 feet, 12 feet wide, and we're gonna lift them up in the air and create this huge structure that's just kind of a heavy and kind of anti-soccer field. So and while everything else, else is like open and airy for the soccer field, we're gonna create an artwork that kind of counteracts this by being heavy and kind of dense. So, you know, also going back to the kind of rearing aspect of it, we've got poles that are holding it up and they're kind of striped black and white because there's, a, there's kind of an aspect to like a water level thing, you know, with about, you know, where you see the you know, do not enter when flooded. You know. So we've got those aspects situated as well. So it's also kind of talking about the desert and all the water and that's needed to do on our soccer field. So, you know, we, we're kind of amassing these pieces to kind of echo also other elements of the valley. So we've got our mass and our heaviness that we lift up in the air. We're making different forms, we're making landforms, we're mimicking mountains. And so, and then we can also have them curve and rotate. Now we're creating shape. And so, you know, as people are sitting and watching the soccer games and watching their kid, you know, they can, you know, be intertwined with the, this mass and this object that's really kind of occupying this space. So here's another view of what it would be like to stand under these two-ton boulders. And we figured that uh, each boulder would be away about two tons and we can get them locally quarried. So it wouldn't be too expensive and we could have to ship them. And so, all, everything is totally natural. It's an Arizona project that is meant to stay in Arizona and look Arizona. So this is a view of what our project would be, you know, situated on the northwest, excuse me, northeast corner of our site. And you can see that we've kind of got this, you know, gentle wave that's still being created through this mass of huge objects. And there's kind of still that a, a gentleness to it, even though, you know, we're talking about 24 tons of stone being held up by three columns each. This is also another view of what it might look like. This one, uh, of course, on the southwestern portion of the site. Also, you know, as it kind of slope, slopes around, around and uh, creates its form. Now, so uh, going back to our agrarian elements that I talked about at the beginning, we are having sculptures made that we're then going to put on top. So like we had the tractor at the beginning, we've got you know, a tractor and other farm equipment kind of talking about Arizona's early days and uh, other aspects of what used to be on the area, which now I think by soccer fields. Finn, so that was hopefully a very bad presentation. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Matt will talk about, you know, what to do. <laughs> what, what you guys don't know is that um, I put this presentation together and Carl had no idea what slides were going to come up. Um, this is a project that we worked on together um, about a year ago, I think. And so Carl knew the project well, but he had no idea what slides I was going to come up with. And the, um, the tractor slide, the red tractor, was from a completely different project. He had no idea. So, I actually think you did a pretty good job of remembering it really good. Um, so um, my name is Matthew Salinger, um, and uh, as Carl said, uh, we have a studio in Tempe, we do art and architecture. Um, I actually uh, went to art school first and, and then went to architecture school and ended up getting my master's degree. Maria, my partner and wife, um, got her architecture degree and then went the other way and got an MFA. Um, and 
uh, we came back to, to Phoenix to try and um, to see what we could do and see what we could affect within the city. Um, and we, we've been interested in public art since 1999. We've been applying for public art pieces in the city of Phoenix since 1999. Um, I don't know how many we've applied for. I'm sure it's over 100. We have gotten three. Um, so that tells you the ratio of, um, you know, you cannot get uh, discouraged um, by rejection. We get um, rejection letters almost every day uh, from all over the country. And, uh, <laughs> you just have to live with that. I think we've probably um, done about 18 to 20 uh, interviews at the City of Phoenix showing proposals. Again, we've gotten three. So uh, you do get a lot of rejection before you get selected, and, and it's just part of the job. Um, one of the main things that I've, I've First of all, let me just say, this is a little bit embarrassing talking to, uh, in front of all of you guys about um, one of our projects and the, and the process of presenting. I, I have to assume that there's one person in the audience that doesn't know anything about presenting, and I'm, essentially I have to do this to them. So I apologize if you guys know a lot of the information that I'm going to tell you, but um, I, that's sort of the basis of what I have to start with. So um, just bear with me on that. Um, but the main thing that I would say um, about how we like to present is to figure out how to take a project that we're working on and make it into a story. Um, and the reason why I say that is that um, if you're telling a story, if you can formulate your process and your project and your concept and your philosophy into a story and make it personal about you um, and, uh, and make it interesting to other people, that is where you're going to gain confidence and gain a sense of um, pride for you to be able to present without being nervous, without being afraid. And, and just kind of letting it rip. And, and that's important to do, I think, in general, for when you present. You have to be yourself, and you have to be confident, and you have to be comfortable. So one of the things that I always do is I always try and dress in a way that um, I feel the most confident and comfortable presenting things. Unfortunately, I kind of dress like a dork. Uh, you know, so I, I'm not you know, cool and have crazy hair and all that kind of stuff, but uh, many hair, actually. But I, you know, I, I try and dress in a way that I feel comfortable presenting things. Carl was an example of some way that you probably don't want to show up to, to a presentation as, but again, that, that was part of our demonstration. Um, anyway, it, the point is, is that you want to try and be comfortable. You want to try and be yourself, and you want to present yourself. And you want to put your life into a story, and you want to put your project into a story. And so I'm going to present the same project that you just saw, but I'm going to present it the way that we presented it as an interview uh, um, about a year ago. Um, before I do that, I'll show you one of the things that, um, that we do to prepare for presentations that apparently a lot of artists don't do is to create a storyboard of what the presentation will contain. Um, it's something that I learned interning as an architect, um, and it makes a lot of sense. So what I do is I start sitting down and I, I think about, you know, we design the whole project. We come up with a concept, we take it through our process, we, we, we have an end result. And then we figure out what's going to go into the presentation. And so we have to tell the story of how we got to the end result. So we have these big boulders sitting on these columns. Well, you know, where did that come from? And for us, it really came from, uh, well, I'll talk about it, but it came from kind of the ridiculousness of where we get our water from in Arizona that we bring it from 350 miles away to this giant canal. And so we wanted to create, you know, the story around, around that, how we got from one thing to another. Again, you'll see that. But we actually placed that in, the, in a cartoon step where we draw out every single slide that we're going to show and, and see the way that it flows before we start putting the presentation together. It's a lot easier to create the presentation when you have this kind of set up and you can always go back and refer to it. So a lot of times I'll switch the order around and, and I'll add things or take things away. Once I start putting things in PowerPoint, it gets a lot easier to do, but I always start with this little sketch. And I, I usually spend about 15 minutes on this and then, um, and then just start going into, into PowerPoint. And it, and it really helps uh, organize your presentation a lot in your thought process. 